In North London, the Brooks are looking to different horizons. They're preparing a nine bottle order for a client in the Middle East. Can you mind? Is it heavy? It is. Why don't we just push this stuff out? Their scents are usually supplied in simple bottles, but there is something more exclusive available. We have one beautiful little flacon made from the original mould that the family commissioned nearly a hundred years ago. Mm. I'll try and wrap it over the sofa. Mm. Hand cut and with pure gold as part of that etching process. Real gold. Real gold, pure gold. Each stopper is, is individual to the particular flacon. Can just put it in. And the way this is, you lock it by a quarter turn. I feel very proud uh, that we've, we've found the mould and um, proud of my ancestors for having the foresight to, um, to, to commission one. So we were very, very lucky. So this is for a special order. It's our first commercial order for a very special customer in the Middle East. Um, who's ordered nine of these. Uh, and who is that customer? You'd have to say. I'd rather not say. No, okay. I think they're, they're very special people. Okay. It's going to a royal family in, uh, in the Middle East. This precious consignment is off to the airport, and so is Simon. There are rich pickings to be had in the Gulf, and a sales drive is in order. Bahrain is unexplored territory for Grossmith. Brooke flies in to launch his trio of Victorian beauties in the kind of place that inspired his ancestors, but which they never saw. No leakages, nothing broken, a few. <laughs> the launch party is at six o'clock tomorrow. Um, we have British ambassador, he's going to be there, and various VIPs, who, mm. they, they love the English in the Middle East. Darn hot though. Mm. Hot and very humid. The scents of Araby have to be strong to survive the climate, as the local competition knows very well. Sorry, I thought I had one dinner. No more one dinner. Finish. Yeah, all Arabic people is taking this. Arabic people is only strong perfume. Princess. Very strong this one. Yeah. Arabic perfume, all this very strong. Yes. Our perfume, this all Arabic people, Indian people, all people this taking this perfume. Yeah. Arabic this popular, this one. Silver drops. This for Arabic. People this taking this very strong. Yeah. Uh, bakhur, bakhur perfume, genital firdos. This G genital firdos oil perfume. This one, okay. genital firdos, very old perfume. This one. Doing business on a new frontier, local knowledge is key. Brooke is joined by Syrian perfume entrepreneur Bashir Nasri, a man with connections. Friend of mine. Sheikh Mohammed Ashmawi he is a very wealthy man. 50% kerosene, British petroleum, Saudi Arabia. Wow. And he loves perfume. Oh, oh. He's one of the one who will buy your Bakara shoe. Is he really? One day, yes. Oh, I can feel the glass is really, really hot. But uh, we haven't been outside long enough to really know what the uh, the climate is like, I don't think. It's 126 degrees today. Uh-huh. Wow. That's uh, a record for me. Simon wants a local distributor, and Bashir takes him to meet the Al Hawaj family, perfume merchants across the Gulf. Perfume fragrance in the Middle East is their life. It's their life. A British lady. Mm -hmm. Consume 100 ml in six months. Here, less than one week. I'm sure in a few years, everybody will know about Grossmith. It's a pleasure to meet you. Mm -hmm. I brought some treasure to show you. So, Shemal Nassim is uh, Arabic for Arabic smelling the breeze, yes. Mm. The best of English perfumery. Yeah. to understand and know and respect the local ways of doing things. Oh, great to meet your people. 
and you forget that at your peril. Yeah, we'll come in Bahrain. Thank you. Never had a date like this before. This is my new world, Ian. I love it. When you've got something as good as this, I mean, you can't. Where can you go wrong? Brook is confident, but his sense will have to contend with sub zero air conditioning and summer temperatures around 140 degrees. The most exciting thing about Simon used to be a pink silk tie. Now he consorts with merchant princes and the kind of customers who can spend their days snoozing, parking, and shopping in malls. The launch is to take place in an Al Hawaj perfumery. Crossmith everywhere. Crossmith, yes. Back at home, an event like this might pull in the squirearchy and a local beauty queen. Simon greets the British ambassador. Hello. Jamie, thank you very much indeed for coming along to this. It's, I'm sort of getting used to this, Your Excellency. Honoured guests and friends in Bahrain, friends uh, at Al Hawaj. Thought about what my Grossmith ancestors would be thinking about all this, and I think they'd be absolutely delighted. They'd be even more pleased if they knew the identity of the next Grossmith customer. The morning after the night before, there's a call from the palace. A courtier wants to meet them at the Al Hawaj offices. The king, when he appoints a buyer, he will not appoint anybody. He will appoint really somebody who is an expert, keen to find for his majesty the fragrance which he loves. Because they know, they know about him. They know everything about their boss, the their king, and they make the selection. This is the boss. <coughs> so there are but I'm not packaging the presentation everything mm -hmm. it's like it really is. It's the very best, very best materials without reference to cost. This is beautiful. That's why they are Peter Dodds has the ear and the credit card of the royal family. He selects all their luxury items. And this is Chemin Nessim. Sweet opening, but not as sweet. Yes. But uh, this is also a chaminess. Florentine orris, so very, very expensive orris. Um, and um, it's becoming my favourite. It's favourite out in the Gulf. We've used really, really lovely materials. We've gone, gone for it and we've done it properly. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's a real really pleasure really to, really really to really share really some really, really, huh? Oh, that's it's gorgeous. This is the picture of your really grand, 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 grand mother. Oh, that is really, this is the perfume. Really lovely. Powdered. Really lovely. Powdered. Mm. She loved it, this one, believe me. And it's a gorgeous one, but it really was. Yeah. Yes. 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 Wear by, uh, by ladies also. Yes. yes. This is so. very... Yes. Hello, good morning. It's the palace. Yes, good morning. State business. OK, in three o'clock, have the swimming pool ready. All right. Yes, please, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Bye. Yeah, so, yeah. so this is the spicy one? Fulla. This is the fulla. Fulla. Riches of the Middle East, gold-plated. You are the first one who discovered the uh, yes. Middle East. Yes. So that is. <laughs> Hello. The palace again. Fine, thank you, sir. Yes, how are you, sir? Good, thank you. Yeah, he is aware of this. He will um, inform uh, Major Carla to uh, arrange this. Yes? OK. No problem. All right, sir, no problem. Inshallah. OK, sir, sure, thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Thank you, welcome. <laughs> yes. So I have a, I have a little gift for you, which uh, I'd be very grateful if you will 
set. There's a two mil vial of each of the three oh, in there for you. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. I think because there's always been a stigma in the West to a certain mm -hmm. extent that, you know, men shouldn't go and have a manicure or they shouldn't It was a shame. It was a shame. It wasn't a manly thing to do, you know. Yeah. But of course now men, mm. you know, in, in the Arabic part mm. of the world and even sort of in Far Eastern parts, mm. I think they tend to look after themselves better than mm. probably we do in the West. Yeah. It's part of their culture. Yeah. It's part of their culture. Thank Pleasant you. journey back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a charming man. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> the brothers in action. Yes. <laughs> yes. Dealings with the palace are hush hush, not rush rush. Simon and Bashir head for the airport and Oman, the next kingdom in need of their fragrance. Simon and Amanda's sense already enjoy must-have status in the Gulf states. We've, we've been very fortunate. We've had lots of cover of, of in, in this sort of magazine, a whole section dedicated to our launch in Qatar. Now, the breeze has carried the heady fragrance into Central Asia. We have an order from Kazakhstan, and he had gone into Rogers Perfumery and um, seen our perfume, smelt it, and just thought it was stunning, and sent me an email from, uh, from Almaty in Kazakhstan, and we'll ship out to Kazakhstan. His Victorian potions have served him well, but how long before Simon changes direction and makes something more modern? It's an aim of ours to innovate. We've got to innovate the business to keep it going. Um, and innovation means new perfumes, not just going to our back catalogue and taking, ah, oh, this one was jolly good, let's, let's have a go at that. Um, I don't think we're going to be doing that um, with many of our, or many of our perfumes. I think we, we will innovate. Uh, and that'll, that'll be a big thing. Will it be successful? Will it be liked? Will it, uh, uh, will it have the romance? Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome. I would like to introduce Simon Brook, who owns the house of Grossman. Thank you very much. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Roger, and uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming along this morning. The Brooks face a challenge. Their lineage is their strength, but brands that are only about the past risk becoming museums. Simon and Amanda's next fragrances must nod to their antique heritage, but smell of the 21st century. We launched with three classic English perfumes. Perfumes in the future for us will be based on the original, and then we go on this journey, and then we modernize. You've got to think that the, the market, you're, you're creating something that you want to make people feel young. You want to change their perception of, of their age. And that's one of the obstacles, one of the hurdles that we need to overcome, I think, a little bit in the UK. In New York, Scent guru Anne Gottlieb is still hard at work on the Lynx account. The input of the Brazilian teenagers is reshaping the next version. A tremendous amount of work followed the trip to Brazil. We were going for something that was a little richer and darker a fragrance, and as a result of having the focus group opinions of, of all the people that we, we um, polled, We've started adding more freshness to the fragrances, a little bit of fruitiness. What's true for Axe is being replicated across the fragrance industry. What may have been businesses driven by the States or being driven by Europe are going to be driven by China, by Brazil, by India, um, and marketers are gearing up for that. And we're looking at 
a cultural shift right now. So it may well be that tastes will shift, and in 10 years, we will be impacted by what the Chinese like. The Western fragrance industry is trying to get to grips with the tastes of China, Brazil, and India. But how long before these new markets are doing it for themselves? Replacing the smell of perspiration with the sweet scent of aspiration. Another chance to catch this evening's Art Deco icon here on BBC4 tonight at quarter to two with a trip to London Transport Headquarters. And coming up next this evening, we're heading back to Glamour's Golden Age.